I am in my sandbox course and I'm going to show you how to create a classic quiz first. So we would obviously head on over to quizzes and we can click the blue quiz button. But of course, the other way to do it, if you, let's say, are building within modules, and sometimes I really like to do this because I like to build my modules out like one assignment at a time. So another option is to click like on a module, click the plus button and go to quizzes. And it's usually the same process. So you click create quiz, new quiz, classic quiz, the name of it, and like the group. So that's just another option. But for today, I'm going to go here into the uh, course navigation bar. And then we can click this blue quiz button and we will start with classic and then later I will show you how to do a new quiz. And there's there's some differences here. I, because I guess I'm old school, I really like classic quizzes and new quizzes sometimes um, can be a little fidgety because it is an external tool quiz, but it's still, it's still not bad. So... Of course, we're going to start with giving it a title. So um, I usually will name it like the module number. So we can just do like M, let's just do M2, M2 L2 for today as an example. And that will be module two, lesson two was on magnetism, if I remember in my class. So usually I'll do like lesson quiz and then magnetism. So that's kind of how I like to organize it. And then of course you can add your directions into the rich content editor here. Um, pretty basic. There's so many questions and uh, you have this amount of time, all the basic information here. And then down here is the quiz type. So is it a practice quiz, graded quiz, graded survey, or ungraded survey. So all these different options are kind of dependent on, they they all do the same question. So meaning like they all will accept like multiple choice, equation questions, multiple answer, short answer, um, but how they appear in the grade book is different. Uh, so just for that. And then of course you have your assignment group, we could do formative, summative. My quizzes are usually summative. And then I always check this box off for shuffle answers. You can add a time limit, allow multiple attempts. I do this in my class because it's actually encouraged by my school um, to allow them to have multiple attempts. And I take the highest. So you can click this box and then say I only want them to be allowed to take it twice. And then this part is important because it will let them see after their first attempt uh, the correct answers. So I usually hide these. So it says, let students see their quiz responses. So meaning they will get to see their quiz. They will not get to see the, um, the incorrect questions. So ultimately, they can see which questions they got correct. It shows them which ones they got wrong, but it does not show them the answer. So it'll say, oh, here's question five. You got it wrong. This was what you put. That's wrong. But it won't tell them what question is correct. So I like that because I feel like they can reflect. I usually have them write it down in their notebook um, so that they can, you know, hold on to it and try to find it in their notebook also because I that's how I work as a teacher but then of course you can do only after their last attempt so meaning they can't see any of this until their last attempt uh, only once after each attempt so they can see it once and then after um, that after they finish and they see it they can't go back to the, the answers um, and then you can also put let students see the correct answers and allow an amount of time. So I just like to keep it simple and I usually leave it like this. But that is completely up to you. Another thing to take note of here 
is I would actually test these out and then um, when you save, preview the quiz and see which format you like the most. Okay, so then this, you can show one question at a time. You can have the option to lock the questions after answering. For my grade level, this doesn't really make sense to lock the questions. And I usually will do all of the questions at once, but that's a preference. All right, for quiz restrictions, you can require an access code. So you can put in any password of your choice and I like to do this because then students cannot access the quiz until I give them the password and sometimes I'll even change the password after every period um, so like for example if this is the password for first period I might for second period do password two for second period and so on that way uh, period one cannot share the password uh, and the reason why I like sometimes adding a access code or password is because then when it comes to assign, you can assign every section to access the test at a given time. But sometimes do setting that up can take some can take a while. So to make it shorter for me, I just do an access code and then I will do the until date. So right here, you can see I have it set at January 10th from 3 to 3.30 p.m., meaning after this time, students can't access this quiz anymore unless, of course, I manually enter it later. Uh, so we can even make it due at that same time here. So 3.30 p.m. And so then I don't have to add an until an, or an available from, so meaning... I'm not putting in the date and time at the beginning for all six periods that I have or adding it for, so like this would be period one and then period two. It's just a lot more simpler. And then from here, I can click save. Okay, so it's pretty blank right now. There are no questions attached to it. So when I click preview, you can see there are no questions. So before keep like editing this quiz and adding the questions, I'm going to show you the way that I do question banks before I even set up the quiz questions. Back on my quizzes page and instead of going over here, we can see here is my the quiz that I have. Instead of going in here and editing, I'm actually going to click on the three dots and do manage question banks. And you'll be able to see all of the question banks that I have for this course. So you can see I have a lot of different ones and they are based on the unit that I teach. So we have electric forces, electromagnetic, gravity in space, and so on. And some of these are labeled because I have them labeled by the exact unit and test that I've done or that I want. And then the other, some of them are from the district that I have imported. Like you can see module seven essay. These ones are from the district that I've imported. So all you have to do to create a new question bank is go add question bank. And then since uh, our test is on magnetism we will type that and it will create it says no questions at this time and we can always um, flag it if we want and then we can edit this oh edit the title we're not going to do that we're going to enter it okay so now from here I can add questions, edit the details, move questions to a different bank, or delete it altogether, or bookmark it. 